Hi guys, what's up? Uh, so today, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, how essentially blockchain can be used uh, in the 5G and in the, I, I, in the IoT Internet of Things. So uh, essentially, right, like uh, whenever you use your internet or whenever you use your mobile communication devices or anything of that, you essentially put your SIM card, like as I discussed in the last video before. So these SIM card would carry a lot of keys. It would carry your public key, private key, and the SIM card number and, you know, other HSC keys and all of that. And this key is essentially to verify yourself on the network whenever you call so similarly whenever you browse internet or whenever you do uh, anything on your smartphone like on the internet or whenever you call you would essentially throwing or passing on certain signals or sharing or sending some kind of a data in form of bytes so essentially what this internet technology like 1g 2g 3g 4g 5g does is that it's essentially reducing the latency time so there's always a latency time between your device communicating to sim card sim card that sim card and your device communicating to nearest tower and all of that so essentially with 5G, it is assumed that your internet would probably become like more like 8 to 10 times, 15 times or even 20 times uh, uh, essentially faster. So how it's happening, your entire latency time is essentially getting reduced. So which means that your phone's bandwidth to communicate to the nearest tower is, uh, you know, in a nutshell is essentially getting uh, uh, you know, reduced to a lot of extent. So let's say how blockchain could essentially help in making it more efficient is through a peer-to-peer -peer communication, right? Uh, let's say, for example, right, you, you are in some network area where you have a very, very limited connectivity. You just have like probably just like one one bar on your device. And whenever you want to access the internet, your internet will be obviously slow compared to you guys having like four bars before. So similarly, let's assume in this scenario, two people and then your friend has full four, four, five bars and you just have one bar and, and you really want to have access to the smart internet, right? So traditionally, what are the potential good ways would be that your friend would share you his hotspot. But again, he might have like probably low, uh, low. Uh, I mean, he might have, uh, you know, less battery and the hotspot obviously consumes high energy and obviously could reduce your bandwidth as well. So in this scenario, what blockchain could do is that since the basic idea of blockchain is like peer-to-peer -peer computing, so what blockchain would essentially do is that your friend's device or your friend's basically uh, uh, device like a SIM card would be connected with each other. So this device would just have one bar could essentially communicate with your friend's device in a secure encrypted format. It could essentially pass data onto them like all your data which is stored on the SIM card and that device could essentially communicate directly with the operators, tower or the infrastructure. So this way you're essentially able to use or get access to the faster connection or a peer-to-peer -peer connection by just identifying the nearest de nearest device which is possible and also sharing the data in an encrypted format. As I told you in the previous video before, like one of the key challenges with every single operator, or every single provider is how the data is managed, it's trust, security, transparency, and also most importantly, the technology, right? The technology which is probably used by the China Mobile, Mobile or AT&T or Verizon or in, in Geo or or Airtel or Vodafone or Idea, whatever it is, would be totally different, right? And they would be using a bunch of different softwares, different algorithms, different uh, platforms, and, and also uh, different kinds of infrastructure. So the whole idea is essentially to make this entire process interoperable. So as you understand, interoperable is essentially the way where, you know, one is essentially can be combined with one in another. For example, uh, uh, you know, like, two things which could essentially be combined. So say for example, right, with the help of internet, you could access your Google Chrome and like the way you could access on a Mac or I know the same way even if you use it on Internet Explorer because this technology or platform is essentially interoperable. So similarly, blockchain would essentially make the entire communications interoperable, essentially, right? And in a much more secure format. So meaning all these telecom companies need not need to uh, uh, worry about uh, uh, you know how the your data is basically essentially being carried and whether you are genuine or not and they could like probably bill you directly without any reconciliation issues and 
other further uh, you know use case would be that like in current scenario let's say you have like probably 100 gigabyte of data or 30 gigabyte of data which is essentially unused and you really want to sell it or you just really want to give it to a friend who's just running out of the data so in that case you would be also able to share your piece of data essentially directly to your friend you could just be able to transfer that ownership of data in a secure encrypted format to your friend it's like interoperable so as you understand that blockchain is purely a uh, data infrastructure technology uh, and this could essentially power which is purely based on peer to peer computing right and 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 you know this could essentially make sure that the way you Possibly would access your data, your entire latency time, and all of that is essentially reduced to a lot of extent. Mm-hmm. And the most important thing is that uh, uh, also the other potential use case. If I have to deep down or deep dive further into technical level uh, of it, is that so whenever you use data and whenever you essentially uh, trying to use your uh, other service provider, like probably you are currently on Jio or Airtel, but you're just traveling and you're just probably using other network or a service provider which is part of a roaming, right? So every single time your service Service provider has to essentially pass on your data to them. So, which means that instead of you communicating directly with that roaming service provider, you are probably every single time communicating with your original service provider, and that also carries some kind of latency time or something like that, right? So, essentially, what essentially can happen on a blockchain is that since all the participants are connected to a uniform network, or think of blockchain creating this bridges of trust or this trust bridges of data among each other, and every single participant or every single operator is essentially Uh, having your data in an encrypted format. So whenever you are essentially trying to communicate to them, you are essentially communicating through your keys, right? A computer would never understand who is Prashant or who is Divya or who is Rebecca or who is Angelina, right? The computer would understand the keys and and codes. So with that, essentially, you can provide or verify yourself on the network in real time directly without depending on the original telecom or the original service providers, and that way you are essentially again reducing your latency time, which would make your network much much faster and much much secure. So this this is one of the potential areas where essentially blockchain to possibly help in maximizing the efficiency of the 5G space and a lot of companies like including Huawei AD&D in the US and Verizon have already started to file patent how to use blockchain for for you know a 5G communication or power in the next phase of internet so guys this is the one of the best times in history to make your career uh, essentially in the blockchain because the world needs the blockchain developers to create this universal data infrastructure and as always my, i always believe that the blockchain is essentially the next big internet right so Uh, probably you know one of my biggest regrets is like probably missing out the internet revolution but this time with blockchain we are going full in because it's a new wave of data this is going to create a tremendous uh, value so guys stay tuned and if you're more interested in more about uh, you know blockchain blockchain related news you could visit snapperbus.com and if you want to know more about the blockchain products and the platforms what we have been working upon you could visit snapperfuturetech.com and if you're looking forward to build your career you could go to indianblockchaininstitute.com thank you so much guys bye cheers